Hey guys, Zach here with multipartstore.com. This is going to be one in a series of video overviews that's going to cover uh, all of the different multi-tools that we carry parts for in our store at multipartstore.com. The purpose of these videos is just going to be to familiarize you with the different tools that are available, the different parts for those, those tools, and how those tools come from the factory for uh, uh, reassembly purposes and that sort of thing. This is not going to be a super comprehensive video, but it is going to be a broad overview so you can familiarize yourself with the tools before you purchase them. This video is on the Gerber Truss. The Gerber Truss is Gerber's other kind of multi-tool. Um, you kind of recognize them because they've got like this truss work formation inside of the frames. Uh, the Gerber Suspension and the Suspension NXT, I think, are also similar. Uh, the Gerber Truss just has more tools. And that's why we sell parts for it, because we want as many tools as possible to sell at multipartstore.com. Uh, they come in a super cheap uh, sheath, Gerber sheath. I'm not worth talking about, but we do sell those at the website too. Um, the um, Let's get the dimensions here. This one's going to be a very tapered model, so I'll give you both. At the top, it's about an inch and three-eighths. At the bottom, it's almost two inches wide. Th thickness is, who would have guessed it, five-eighths. And it's about four and a quarter long. Um, this tool, let's see. On the frame, you're gonna have truss and Gerber are gonna be two different sides. So you're gonna have your Gerber side, uh, you're gonna have this side, and then you're gonna have your truss side, and those, those these two sides are gonna be uh, identical. But then the other two sides are gonna have truss and Gerber written on them. So starting with the Gerber side, I guess we'll go through the in, interior tools, quote unquote. Um, from Gerber back, we're gonna start with a plain edge knife blade. Then we're gonna have, these tools are really hard to get out new. Um, in fact, I'm gonna get them all out at once and then I'm gonna tell you which comes where. Wow, that one does not wanna cooperate. Okay, I'm gonna cut my hand open. So, plain edge knife blade from Gerber back, plain edge knife blade. Then you've got a medium flat blade with a file on one side and a, uh, what is, is that? That is a ruler. That is a depth gauge on the other side. Then you're going to have this crazy uh, bottle opener, can opener, flat blade combo. Nope, that's out of order. I apologize. It's plain edge. Then it's the file with the depth gauge. Then it is, I believe this is an awl. It is an awl. Um, then it is that combo tool. And the, finally, it's a little pair of scissors. Looking down the barrel, we're gonna see that there are, again, spacers between each layer. It does appear that there is either an extra spacer next to the scissors or that there's something else causing a space there. You see the wires on the outside. So the wire springs on the outside in this one, but it looks like there's a little something extra between there. I haven't dismantled this one yet, so I can't say for sure. On the other side, you're going to have, um, let's see, let's start with, so the truss side, right? Uh, you're going to have the serrated edge blade, which is interesting because the tip of it's still straight. So you have both. Um, it's a combo edge blade, essentially, but, you know. Um, and again, I'm going to put that away. I'm going to pull up. I'm going to see if I can get these other layers out. They're quite stiff. There we go. So plain edge blade, or serrated edge blade, excuse me. Then you're going to have a large flat screwdriver with, that is a uh, wire stripper there. Then you're going to have a three-dimensional Phillips. And uh, then you have a big gap, and then you're going to have the saw blade. And I mentioned that big gap because if we look from the end, you are going to have... Two normal size spacers, 
This spacer between the flat blade and the Phillips blade has a little notch in it, and I'm not sure why. Um, and then you're going to have two large spacers between the Phillips blade and the saw. If we look at... No. So these do have... Uh, I don't know if you can see those tabs that are sticking out to the right. That's going to be the same as the MP600 has these tabs that are visible through the back. So that's that's interesting. You'll want to keep track of, of again, where those thick ones are. Um, the other difference is the Gerber handle. So these handles are going to be different in that the Gerber handle has a lanyard ring. So the shapes are different. They're not identical. Um, yeah, and you'll be able to purchase either the saw side or the file side in this case, or the scissor side, excuse me. There's no, the file side's different. Um, looking at the pivots, we're going to have a, ooh, is that a, T, what is that? It's not a T10, but I don't think it's a T8 either. It's definitely not a T8. These might be a T9. I would not try and turn this with a T10. These have got to be T9. I don't have a T9 on me, unfortunately. But they're definitely not a T10 or a T8. They're in between. So that's something worth noting. I have to pick up some T9 drivers. Uh, when it comes to the smaller ones, those are T8. Oh, maybe these are T8s. It just, that feels too sloppy. I think those are T9s. I'm sorry I can't provide a more definitive answer. Um, these smaller screws are definitely T8s. And it looks like those smaller screws are really only for, I don't know what they're for. Might be the locking mechanism. Now, I have heard uh, that these, these tools are interchangeable with the MP600 tools. Um, and I probably need to mention that. I'm going to go back in time in a second here and mention that in the MP600 video. But these tools are geometrically interchangeable with the MP600 tools. They might be too thick or, you know, there might be other issues, but they should, in theory, work across the board. The other thing about the truss is the pliers are spring loaded. Uh, they are not bypass cutters. They're hammer or they're you know blade and anvil, they're anvil style cutters. I don't know what you call it, hammer and anvil. Um, yeah, serrated teeth, normal pliers, spring loaded, pretty basic. Um, I'm gonna have uh, if you want to confirm those bolt sizes or those the, the screw head sizes. Uh, check out our website at multipartstore.com. We're going to have a page up very soon, I hope, with a spreadsheet that's going to give you all of the drive sizes for all of these tools, as well as pivot sizes for the pliers and the tool side um, and, and uh, tool thickness as well. So hopefully that'll help. Appreciate you watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one. One thing I want to mention about the uh, Gerber 600 tools uh, that I forgot and why I'm tacking this on to the end of the video is that all of the tools should be compatible with the Gerber truss and suspension lines uh, back and forth. They all have the same locking geometry as well as uh, um, uh, pivot size. So they should be interchangeable. You just have to account for tool thickness as well as, you know, the tool length and make sure there's room for it in your uh, setup. I've got a small addendum for the Gerber MP600 and the Gerber Truss um, video overviews. Uh, so I just pulled these parts. This one on the right, uh, the can opener, the bottle opener here is from the uh, MP600 and this uh, combo tool is from the Gerber Truss. And I have confirmed these are the same um, geometry for the lock. So these should be uh, more or less interchangeable. And that's, I just wanted to confirm that now that I have these apart and can confirm that that is the case.